Hello and welcome to DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero. This is the grand finale. It's been a long journey. There was, of course, the screening of all the lovely innovations that came in from around the country. And then 16 of the top innovating teams came here and competed on this forum, dazzled us with their ideas, with the Shunya proposition that they're using their innovation to achieve. What is the Shunya that we're talking about? What is the zero that we're celebrating here on the show? Well, to attempt to bring to zero all that ails us in our society. Look at problems around you, think of great ideas, how can you bring all wastage, malnutrition, accidents, everything that's bad, how can you bring that to zero? Bring your idea here, dazzle us and walk away with big prizes. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Well, it's slightly harder than that because it's made harder by the fact that we have a jury here, some of the finest minds from science, from management, from innovation, who quiz you, keep trying to puncture holes. 16 teams withstood that, two better than 14 others. And those are the two that are playing our grand finale today. At 284 on our leaderboard and at 240 on our leaderboard, these two teams are going to show their innovations and their products again today. And our judges are going to take the final decision and tell us who the winner is. Let's meet our judges for this grand finale. From DuPont, of course, we have uh, the Regional Technology Director, Asia Pacific, Dr. Homi Bidwar. We also have our returning judge from uh, our entire journey here, the uh, CMD of Karma Venture Services, Ms. Nandini Vedinathan. We also have uh, the founder and CEO of Milagro Business and Knowledge Solutions, Mr. Rajiv Karwal. To add another layer of objectivity to their decision, we have a special jury member here today. We'd like to welcome with a warm round of applause, uh, the J.C. Bose National Fellow and former Director General of CSIR India, Professor Samir Brahmachari. Professor Brahmachari, welcome to the show. Thank you. Two people who work tirelessly behind the scenes, bringing it down, poking holes in all of those, telling us what is right, what is not, what is there, what is almost there. And we'd like to call those two gentlemen out here and give them a warm round of applause. Could I please welcome Mr. Ranjan Patnaik from the DuPont Knowledge Center and uh, Dr. Anil Wali from IIT Delhi. Could please welcome them with a warm round of applause. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you, sir? Good to see you. I'd like to uh, invite Professor Bhamachari if you could please uh, give two mementos to our very special pre-season judges, please. We, of course, now have the grand finale. Let's get our two teams out. Our first team impressed us with their Nano Zeta Purifier. They got 240 points from our judges in the prelim, got them to second position on our leaderboard, and today they're going to come here and try and dazzle us some more, try to walk away with that big prize. So please welcome, once again on the show, from the School of Biosciences and Technology, VIT University, Vellore, Devlina Das, and from the Selesh J. Mehta School of Management, IIT Mumbai, Pushkin Kasat. <laughs> Devlina and Pushkin, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. We have four jury members, as you know, today. Devlina, Pushkin, all the best. All right? I don't need to tell you not to be nervous because you guys are looking in a fabulous zone. So, judges, it's over to you. As you know, now everything is back to zero, right? You know that, right? And all gloves are off, right? Okay. And also, uh, we can ask any question. I've been asking a lot of science questions and I've been looking at the science person. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. You tell me the science behind this product, in your words. Right. I don't want her to say a word. <laughs> you tell me the science. All right. So, so Zeta is a technical abbreviation of a zinc oxide nanop nanoparticle and a tetraamine amine. So that forms Zeta. Basically what happens is the zinc oxide uh, nanoparticle along with the other compounds like sulfurolipid uh, and uh, various other compounds, uh, it absorbs it adsorbs the impurities or the, the uh, various kinds of uh, metals, heavy metals, etc., from the water, uh, uses cell damage or photocatalytic uh, degradation and destroys the impurities. 
At the same time, it does not uh, change any of the other properties of water, does not remove the minerals which are essential for the body and keeps the water uh, totally portable. Wow. Tommy, how did he do? Wow. <laughs> can we do a round of applause for him? I can give him a I clap. think we should. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. So I, either you really understand this or you mugged up the script really well. Which one is it? No, or Devlina did a damn good job of uh, grooming him. Yes. Making him understand I the science we'll behind it. Put the credit where it's due there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think yes. she did yes. it. Awesome. I don't know if my question is correct, but you'll have to help me understand it. Your cartridge eludes, uh, your zinc oxide nanoparticle eludes, you know, zinc oxide into purified water, right? I am told zinc oxide itself, you cannot remove all of it and it remains in a higher concentration than let's say silver. And the nanoparticle itself is hazardous to health, to, you know, to the whatever, body metabolism yeah. or whatever. Is there something in your innovation pipeline where you have addressed this? When I'm disposing the thing in soil or in water after the use, be the nanopowder, be the bit form or be the membrane form, after the membrane and bit is totally degraded, that particular soil I use in a slurry form using a magnet to recover those excess okay. of zinc oxide. Uh, it, it's gone over my comprehension now. Let's get back to the domestic purifier. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's assume for the moment you've sold your cartridge to the purifier manufacturer. He's used it. How are you going to extract the um, additional zinc from it? Is that a complicated process? Is that going to add to your cost as opposed to silver? Just explain that to me. Uh, by zinc, do you mean the zinc present? Nanoparticle, yeah. Your cartridge eludes some of that, right? Doesn't it remain in purified water? Uh, the no. zinc, the zeta particle are you talking about? Are you talking about the zinc in water? Zinc, that? zinc. No, no. Yeah. Is the zeta particle leaching? That's what her question No, is. it yeah. doesn't leach yeah. at all because okay. The zinc oxide nanoparticle is bound to an amine whenever we are using in conjunction with an activated carbon. Okay. In my case, I have used 425 micrometer of size. So when use, these two in use in conjunction, uh, conjunction, the particle is so fine, okay. there is no problem of leaching. Okay. We have so versus silver, it compares very well. Yes. No health hazard at no, all. No, no health okay. hazard. Okay. Um, a typical non-electric purifier uses, I mean, the cartridge there, I'm told, is about 18 pies. How does yours compare with that? The non-electric purifier used today are no doubt very cost effective. But more than a purifier, they act as a filter because why I'm saying this, the non-electric purifier, when I tested them in the lab, the, I, on various types of wastewater, even the tap water in Bellot, it uh, could not depollute the water. It means the water was not safe to drink. It did not reach the US EPA or the WHO limits. So, uh, following that particular convention, I have designed Zeta, lower than the price of a filter, but works more efficiently than a filter, equivalent to an RO. Okay, thank you. In terms of uh, the innovation pipeline from here on for the next, say, four to five years and uh, the revenue projections, margins, have you done some work on the business side? Uh, I have prepared a brief innovation pipeline for the next five years. I have planned uh, four major modifications in Zeta. So basically the major uh, target points of these four uh, modifications would be I want to use my purifier at a low temperature. If the temperature of water goes down to some 2 or 1 degree Celsius, I should be able to use using Zeta X. If uh, the water, I have to add antioxidants to the water, I'll be uh, using a Zeta Antox cartridge. If I have to uh, harvest rainwater and convert it to a portable drinking water, I'll be using a Zeta RH, rain harvest system. And if I have to use a particular system where it can remove hydrocarbons from wastewater, the polyaromatic hydrocarbons, then I'd be using a Zeta hydrogel system. This would, this would be, my, these are my plans for the future. Tell me why all this could be done because for the audience, this nano, you know this nano word, zinc oxide was there, but what is this nano particle that made a difference? Zinc oxide was there, even zinc oxide nanoparticle was also there. If I would have said zinc oxide nanoparticle, that would sound, that would be a discovery. If I would have said theta, that would again be a discovery. But these two discoveries, via Kytos and Moiti, got linked. 
zinc oxide nanoparticle size got even lesser using the sophorolipid and we left one loose end to come up with various varieties of zeta so that it has a wide market in the future. Last question I want to ask, who motivated you to do this work? The circumstances in Velour motivated me the mm. most. I am in Velour for the past eight years. In my area, Katpadi, every day there are at least two deaths caused only due to the scarcity and water problem. People cannot afford an arrow. If people afford a filter, it's not sufficient. It doesn't suffice. It doesn't remove all the pollutants to the maximum level. So I thought I, maybe I could come up with a cost-effective and equally efficient system that can compete with an RO in the near future. Well, thank you so much. Let's give them a big round of applause, Devlina and Pushkin. Our first finalists, of course, that's just one. We, of course, have the second competing team here that's going to come now and dazzle our judges for that big prize. That's going to happen after the short little break when we come back on Dubon Presents The Power of Shunya. Challenge for Zero, the grand finale. Keep watching. Well, we heard about the first product. The second is the micro cold storage. They were in the previous episode. They were the last of our 16 innovating teams. And well, sometimes they say, save the best for last. Let's bring out our second team now for micro cold storage. Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur's Vivek Pandey and IIFT Kolkata's Rahul Sharma. Rahul, Vivek, how are you? Oh, great to be here. Nice. Professor Brahmachari, why don't you take the first question, please? You know, it's a very interesting product. I just want to understand uh, solar PV you use. But do you think this is cost effective, such beautiful insulated system for rural India? So I'll just give you a case uh, of a pilot that we are going to, use, uh, going to have very soon in UP, uh, where the farmer produces flowers, which is called gladli, and at the same time produces banana. What he does is he purchases these bulbs that are responsible for uh, sowing. Uh, these bulbs are pur purchased at higher rates and uh, they are not stored properly, so the output of these bulbs is just two or uh, one or two flowers. According, he is very confident that it, it will, if he keeps at it, it at the right condition, it will double the output. At the same time, when, uh, when the season is over, he can keep the bulb inside. So if you look at the ROI of the product, if, if, the, if the customer is financed pretty well through our financing agencies who we are in talks with, he can definitely get his returns very soon. At the same time, if you compare it with a, with a standard cold room, uh, the cost is a little higher, but the I running cost... I disagree that it's just a little higher. Suppose I didn't set up a cold storage on, on, on field, right? Yes. I uh, outsourced it, okay? Okay. If I outsource it, it's what, about 700 rupees a ton? Yes. So let's say comp comparably for a five tonner, mm. I would pay 3,500, Yes. right? Per acre, I understand, uh, you can grow about 10 tons of potatoes. Of potatoes, correct. Right? So in any case, if, I'm, if I have only one acre, mm -hmm. I still need a cold storage on site, which will hold 10 tons. Otherwise, yes, it's of no use to me. Exactly. My cost goes up to 6 to 8 lakhs. Yes. Does so, it make uh, it worthwhile? If, it, if, it, uh, if you look at my uh, target commodities that we are targeting, potato is not really a very nice target. The reason is... Uh, the perishability of potato is not as high as let's Yeah, say, but strawberry. it is the one that requires 4 degrees. There are several other commodities that require 3 to 5 degrees, 3 to 10 degrees of storage. Uh, and their life is just 7 days or 15 days or 2 months. However, if potato is kept as right conditions, it can last for 1 year. Who is going to be your biggest customer? Currently, because we are running at a pilot stage, we have targeted institutional sales and agri, uh, agri supply chain companies. Uh, for example, uh, one of the agriculture universities in Karnataka, uh, has installed our product and farmers are uh, using the product micro cold storage for keeping their produce at a cost. Which produce? So the producers that they keep are papaya, onions, carrot, uh, things like that. Uh, so you have a private limited company and you have you know more or less a finished product. Correct. What are the financial challenges which you are facing currently in terms of scaling up? Uh, the biggest challenge uh, to go to the market very aggressively is, uh, is just the production capability for which we, require, we may require huge amount of funds. So uh, we, we have a fund requirement of around uh, uh, $1 million uh, given uh, in the next six, six to seven months. 
so uh, and we are in process of raising that so that that's a challenge that we have to overcome but as such uh, i think we are running pretty smoothly since i asked the previous team a little bit of a science question i'm going to ask you one too so uh, how come you can use solar power to you uh, to drive a constant torque compressor what how does that work i'm not a, uh, much of a technical guy sir so let me just yeah. make a comment here so when innovation occurs uh, and you have a person who's maybe done the innovation or whatever it is and and there are there are you need to understand the whole part of of the innovation process right it's not enough just to understand one piece or the other if you have a, sci a science label you shouldn't just be talking about science you should be talking about how can you make money same thing for you you should not just be talking about money but understand the yes. the value of what this yes, product yes, brings you will be able to get it across to the market much better if you understand that right yes, and sir. and if you keep saying i'm not a science guy i you know, this and that you know it, it it's not going to sell so these are the kinds of things i think we need to be thinking about we work in silos and we don't want to do that and what are and, the most expensive mm -hmm. component in his product which you would like to reduce cost and eliminate the compressor would be one and uh, there is heat transfer mechanism which is there so we can again bring down cost in that and yes there is material cost uh, if we are able to build it in house or uh, there are certain other technologies like 3d printing etc because we we have also uh, try to build a prototype with the help of 3d printing and if we can achieve multiplication of volumes we might be able to uh, reduce the cost to a great extent what happened to solar cell itself yeah the solar array uh, that is the biggest big thing out there sitting on top of your roof right it sits yeah. on top of your roof you know you shouldn't be just this bluff master marketing guy <laughs> you know you really i mean his is a product that fixes a problem a genuine problem you should get involved in it so that you're actually able to make sure that the problem that he is fixing actually goes out to the market and fixes it well thank you so much gentlemen let's give them a round of applause please we've heard from both our finalists and now it comes down to that final moment our judges will now consult each other hopefully they will not get too violent a little bit of nudging is allowed but nothing more than that and then they will decide who the winner is of season 2 of dupont presents the power of shunya challenge for zero The moment we've all been waiting for this is what this journey has been about it's been so many months so many innovations and it's come down to this moment who is the winner of season 2 of dupont presents the power of shunya challenge for zero so if you could just tell us some of your thoughts on the finalists that you saw here before you give away the result i thought the science behind the zeta innovation was really cool I thought the ability to be able to uh, address different water issues and so on makes it a very very interesting innovation. Uh, as far as I am concerned when I look at the two uh, finalists uh, what Devlina and team has I think is brilliant. If I was in their place I would immediately rush to the market you know and commercialize this innovation. When I looked at their presentation today somewhere something is holding them back i don't know what hmm. and when i look at the other team the guy didn't have the real answer but he knows that along the way he will make it perfect so he is ready rolling commercializing raising funds and that's what i liked about the second team nandini who impressed you more um i liked both of them to the extent that both were trying to fix a problem which exists which is rampant genuine and problem causing but like rajiv said one has already got the poc proof of concept mm. 
he's, in, he's incorporated a company, he's invested, he's raised capital, he's put a team together, he's raring to go. He may not have all the answers right now. Yeah. Nobody does, even a mature entrepreneur does not have. But he's kind of on that brink, you know. Dev Lina, I think, is a very good scientific mind, talking so passionately about it in the laboratory context. Yeah. When are you going to take it to market? Because I want to see that passion converting to delight on her customer space. And to my mind at this point in time, not only is she far from it, she doesn't seem to have trained her sights on it. That is where my problem is. I see your point. Dr. Brahmachari, is it, is it obviously now our viewers are sitting there and they want to know what are we rewarding more or is it a tough call for the judges between potential of innovation or proven performance of innovation? As we discussed that I think both are fantastic. Innovation chain, there is an invention part and there's a translational part. So therefore... Oh, don't tell us, don't tell us. Therefore, tell I us cannot, yet. I only say yeah. the balance is very close. So it's safe to say that it's been a very difficult decision for you, yeah. right? That's yeah. right. It's a very difficult call for our judges. See, normally there's three. Today there's four. Has there been a two-all tie? Will we need to have a penalty shootout? If so, who's going to be the goalkeeper? We don't know any of these things. But we do know our winners from last year. And we'd like to call them out. So they have to hand over their rolling trophy. So I'm sure there's going to be a few tears. So please welcome back on the show last year's winners, Momita and Sanidhi. Hello, ladies. Welcome back. How are you? Hi, How are you? How are you? You know what I'll do? I'm going to pick it up. Give it back to us. <laughs> Let's just relive the moment for them. Let's give them a round of applause. There you go. Thank you. Yeah? Well, who are they going to give this trophy to? The winners of season two of DuPont Presents, The Power of Shunya, Challenge for Zero. I'd like to request our special judge, special jury member, Professor Brahmachari, if you could now do the honors of telling us Who's won this tight battle? As I said, you know, it's a real 4951 business. But finally, we have to decide. And the team has decided it is the micro cold storage. So, if we could please bring Vivek out Vivek Pandey and Rahul Sharma, comprising team micro cold storage, our winners for season two. Let's give them a big round of applause and welcome them. Sir, I request you to come here, please. Congratulations, my friends. Congratulations. If you could just stand there. And girls, you and Professor Brahmachari have to hand over the trophy to the winners. So, sir, if you could just please do the honors with them. No crying, girls. No crying. Thank you very much. I'm going to let you guys go now. Yeah? Thank you so much and congratulations once again for handing over the trophy with so much dignity. Well done. Well done. Well, I know what you guys are waiting for. You're like, okay, the silverware and all is nice, but where's our check? Somebody spoke about a fair bit of cash. Yes, you're going to get your check too. To give that away, I'd like to welcome the president of South Asia and ASEAN DuPont, Mr. Balvinder Singh Kalsi, to come out and hand over the check, please. Vivek and Rahul, well done. Thank you. Well done. You. That was outstanding use of science to kind of deliver on the challenge for zero. Congratulations. <laughs> Vivek and Rahul, that's one heavy check, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? Definitely. I think next time we'll just get you a briefcase of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Might just be easier. Well, that's all we have time for on this season of DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero. We're going to leave you with just one thought. Keep innovating. Your country needs it. Your countrymen need it. The world needs it. Thank you so much for watching. All well, you sharp young minds, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>